Welcome in, ladies, gentlemen, back on the JV Show. Welcome back, everyone, onto the JV Show, our second episode on the Fantasy Football Network. And today, you got myself, your host, JV, and alongside me, three new faces for the episode. We got Dylan, we got Anish, and we got Gall. Dylan, how are you doing tonight? Dude, I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on. Hey, man, I appreciate you for coming on, spending some time on the podcast. Anish, what's going on, man? Nothing much. Same thing. Thanks for having me on. Excited to get into this me too me too and gall what's going on man not much dude i'm just happy to be here happy to have you uh all these guys's creator pages are going to be linked down in the comments in the caption so please go check it out they will be shouted out so please guys go show them some love they all three got fantastic things rolling but tonight we got some divisional round playoff talk to preview there were some crazy wild card games i mean we saw that dallas 49ers game like there was some crazy shit that went down this weekend and it's only going to get better from here on out and i want to kick this episode right off um with the afc matchups coming up so obviously we see the Bengals pull out with a w against the raiders they're heading to the number one seed against the titans dylan i'll go to you here first what are your thoughts on this game between the Bengals and the titans uh you know i I love the Titans this year, uh, you know, even though everyone's doubting them uh, because, you know, Ryan Tannehill, Tannehill hasn't had the greatest season and, you know, Julio's been kind of a bust, you know, with his injuries. Um, but I like their chances. Uh, I hope Derrick Henry's able to come back. Uh, we'll see how many times, you know, they give him the ball. But I think it's going to be a really good game. But I have confidence in the Titans that they're going to be able to pull this one out. Yeah, I mean, I think both teams, uh, it could go either way this game. I, I don't think it's lopsided at all. I think the Titans have the slight advantage, obviously, if Henry comes back. Anish, if Henry's returning into the lineup, what are you expecting from him in this game versus the Bengals? I mean, here's the thing with Derrick Henry, right? You have a guy who is the epitome of a power scheme. And I think with the Titans, that's something that they've kind of missed, but they've also had a pretty good running back duo with Dontre Hilliard and Deontay Foreman. So it's not like they've, you know, completely reverted from what they originally have done. It's just, I think Derrick Henry gives you that extra factor, you know, at the second level beyond, you know, 10, 10 plus yards, just because of brute strength. So I think we're going to see a lot of that, you know, on first and second down. That's what the Titans love to do. And I think the best thing about Ryan Tannehill, as Dylan mentioned, and as you mentioned, you know, an up and down season from him, I think he really thrives off of play action. I did uh, a video on him a year ago, just kind of scouting how he did. And I think that's where, you know, he thrives at his best. It's when, you know, man coverage down the field on, you know, play action passes where Derrick Henry does attract some ten attention. And obviously, you know, Zach Taylor and that Bengal staff has to really look into that. So I think he adds another element to this. And, you know, for Ryan Tannehill, hopefully it's going to help him a lot. Yeah, and credit to the Titans. Without Derrick Henry, they've had a fantastic season with Julio Jones in and out of the lineup. Him just not working well in the offense throughout the entire season, basically. And they've still gotten the job done. A.J. Brown coming back looks great. Gall, what are your expectations from this game, Titans versus Bengals? Um, this is one that I haven't paid attention too much to just because I yeah. kind of figured the Bengals were like almost a write-off team. Like they were not going to show up, but I will say that while a lot of the other teams, um, have been seeming to go on the decline or at least be kind of figured out by defenses, it seems like the Bengals have been only getting better and that the link between Joe Burrow and his receivers is just kind of legendary right now. And, and they're just riding this train and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them win but a healthy Derrick Henry is obviously a monstrous force. So if he's fully healthy and looking like himself, I'm going to give it to the Titans. If not, I think that the Bengals have a slight edge, but still either way it could go. Right. Yeah. I think, as you mentioned, I think it's going to go either way. This is, this is the only game really that I'm like in the middle 50%, 50-50. You mentioned Joe Burrow. He's had a fantastic season like this guy he had an mvp type season obviously rogers great season brady they had a little bit better but burrow's right up there 
is Burrow right now what you've seen from him and coming into the playoffs playing like it's just a regular season game? I'll leave this to the floor. Anybody can answer. Are you guys marking him as a top eight quarterback in the league right now? No doubt. I don't think I don't think that should even be the question anymore. Uh, I was always one of those guys that was actually a bigger believer in Burrow over Herbert. I thought I still think the Bengals were right in taking him number one overall. But I will say this: I think the recency bias has gotten to a lot of people. Like we seem to forget, Justin Herbert is more talented. He can make throws on the far hash that Burrow simply just can't because he doesn't have as big of an arm. But I will say this, I think Joe Burrow brings intangibles to the team. You can see it, you know, in the way he leads this team, especially coming off the ACL. I thought they honestly rushed him back. I would have liked to see him wait till week one, you know, after a kind of shaky preseason. And look at him now, right? I I believe he's had like 1,100 yards in the last three games uh, with uh, no picks. So he's had a really, really good showing. I I would say top eight for sure. And I, I mean, like... If you were to give me, you know, a this or that with Joe Burrow, I mean, I would take him over Dak. I would take him over Kyler right now. Herbert, again, I really wish we got to see Herbert in the playoffs just because I think that's the really telling tale of the two. You know, we never will get to see him this year. We'll see next year if Herbert can make it. But, yeah, I think he's up there. I think he's up in that top five to seven range right now uh, for sure. I, I can't take him over Allen. Can't take him over Mahomes, Brady, and Rodgers for sure. But – I think he's really up there in that five to seven range, top eight for sure. Yeah, the confidence he's shown this year is it's it's on another level. You don't see that from uh, first year, second year, third year. You don't see that from like fourth year quarterback sending into the playoffs. He this is his first playoff appearance, and he came in there like he was nothing. Dylan, where are you ranking Joe Burrow right now for quarterbacks? You putting him top five, top three, top eight? Where where does he sit for you? Yeah, I kind of agree with Nish on, you know, the fact that, you know, Joe Burrow is a winner and, you know, he's really showed that this year. And, uh, you know, before the season, I wouldn't have put Joe Burrow in the top 15, honestly. Uh, wow. You know, he had a lot of he had a lot of offensive struggles and, you know, it wasn't his fault. Um, but, you know, the Bengals did a really good job of, uh, you know, drafting Jamar Chase. And because, you know, at first I thought that was a very controversial draft pick. I thought, you know, especially after the Joe Burrow injury, you would think they want to protect the quarterback. So I thought Joel would have been the safe pick, but, you know, it turns out Jamar Chase had, you know, a Justin Jefferson type rookie year. And, uh, you know, that's why I consider him a top eight quarterback. Um, I'm still taking Herbert uh, over Burrow, just like Nish said, you know, the pure talent of, you know, Herbert uh, is insane. And I think, you know, those two are going to kind of, you know, be talked about a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I consider him top eight. Uh, I I hate seeing the articles about him being compared to Mahomes. I don't think he's at that level yet. Uh, you know, Mahomes is just on another tier. Uh, but Burrow's definitely getting up there. So top eight for sure. Yeah, I don't think Burrow obviously had the start like Mahomes did to his career. Mahomes came out with the bang, fifty-four touchdown season. But Burrow, as you mentioned, is. Sl- slowly climbing that ladder and he's getting up to that top tier level uh gall i'll go to you here quickly your thoughts on burrow is he in your top five top eight right now and then just your game picks for the titans versus Bengals. yeah i think that he is uh top eight but probably like seven or eight um i think that we're still we're still waiting to see what happens with russell wilson I think that Lamar is in the in this in this conversation as well, and then him and Herbert I think are fighting for seven or eight, um, and then I think I am gonna go with the Titans for the game just because betting against Derrick Henry has never been um, something I like to do, and he's shown in the past that he can come off an injury and just immediately put on like without any sort without missing a step. So, um, and to add to that, Tannehill's been in this situation before. He's a he's a veteran QB and. And this is playoffs, which we all know is a different situation entirely. 100%. Yeah. Dylan, uh, you're up next. Who you got, Titans versus Bengals? And by the way, I'm really shocked you didn't put Big Ben in your top five. I see the Steelers jersey in the back <laughs> there. So I don't know if they're a big supporter or nothing, but uh, I was just, I was shocked. But Yeah. Hey, you know, Ben's not in my top 25 as much as I love him. Uh, you know, he's just not the QB he, he was. And, uh, you know, he showed that uh, this past week. Um, but I'm going to say I have to take the Titans kind of like I said earlier, um, you know, like golf said, uh, the Titans got the experience and I think not enough people are talking about the Titans defense. Uh, you know, they're the Jeffrey Simmons has been insane this year, just in general. 
I think their D-line is going to cause some issues. And, uh, you know, the Titans' safeties are going to be huge against, uh, you know, helping the corners with Jamar Chase. So uh, I think they're going to have some answers to, you know, defending them. Uh, so, yeah, I really like the Titans, and uh, I think Derrick Henry is going to go off this week. Yeah, and Anish, finally, you're up. Who do you got, Titans versus Bengals? I think this game goes beyond just, I think, Derrick Henry and uh, Joe Burrow. I think the main matchup is going to be Chase and Christian Fulton because the two games that Chase struggled this year were against the Browns when they shadowed man coverage with Greg Newsom and Denzel Ward, and then the Broncos with Bryce Callahan and Patrick Sertan. So, ironically, the way he thrives is off man coverage, but also the way to stop him is man coverage. So, uh, as Dylan mentioned, yes, Kevin Byard will be a big part. I think I expect two high shell with, you know, Byard kind of coming over deep routes. Um, but I am going to take the Titans as well for now. I think, you know, obviously there's contingency in case anyone gets COVID or anything like that. But I think the biggest thing is, too, is that we've seen one seeds get upset when they have three weeks of rest instead of two. I think the Week 18 game was good for the Titans. It was a good morale boost to go into the playoffs, right? It was a back-and-forth battle with the Texans, but they pulled it through, and they had to play all their starters for the one seed. They really had to earn it. They didn't just have to rest. In week 18 so i think that's good it's two weeks instead of three which doesn't hurt any momentum i think that's another underrated facet as well and as these guys mentioned too ryan Tannehill has been here before he has been on the up uh you know on one side winning at home and also on the other side winning on the road in the playoffs so trust ryan Tannehill here as well yeah i'll take the titans too so we'll go four for four i i just think that right now again Tannehill, the more experienced quarterback obviously and Derrick Henry coming back, I think it's going to be really difficult to stop him. Uh, moving to the next game in the AFC, uh, Chiefs versus Bills. Gall, we'll go to you first here. Give me your thoughts on this game. Which way do you think it's going to go? I am all about the Bills. You will not see – I'm. I'm. I mean, we'll get to it later, but Bills – I think that they're, they've got the highest chance to go to the Super Bowl right now. Um, Josh Allen looks unstoppable with that game last week against a good defense. So we'll see. And then also, I'll, I just keep thinking back to uh, Stefan Diggs last year, standing on the field watching the Chiefs and just everybody. It's it's just such a revenge game. And, you know, I've been rocking with the Bills since day one. I've got a futures bet for them to win the Super Bowl from – from weeks ago so yeah i'll be taking them for sure yes yeah, it's, it's definitely come full circle i was gonna point that out too that Diggs, he's he's definitely taking this personally and like the bills this means a lot for them their fan base obviously those four super bowls back a few decades ago where they lost four in a row like this is you know this is the team that's gonna do it dylan do you have faith in the bills or are you taking the chiefs who are coming off back-to-back super bowl appearances you know, it's always hard to pick against the Chiefs. Uh, you know, I, it's you know, Mahomes is making me to start to hate him because of how good he's becoming. Uh, but you know, Josh Allen put up, uh, you know, a near perfect performance against you know a top five you know Patriots defense. Um, but you know, to me, I think you know this is the start of a heated rivalry, and you know we're gonna enjoy this as you know the years go on. Uh, but you know, it's hard to bet, bet against the Chiefs, and you know that defense is just looking too good for me. Um, and I think without Tredavious White, uh, the Bills might have some problems with, uh, you know, Tyree Kale, maybe Travis Kelsey. But I really liked uh, what I saw, you know, on the goal line offense for the Chiefs, you know, last week, uh, you know, with all their kind of trick plays and, uh, you know, making Kelsey, you know, throw a quarterback. So I think Andy Reid, you know, knows what he's doing. And I think just purely off of coaching, I think Andy Reid is going to, get them over the hump and, you know, win this game. It's because of that lineman touchdown, I bet, huh, Dylan? It's exactly. The lineman, yep. That's why you like their goal. I wasn't there. even mad about that one either. <laughs> uh, Anish, uh, number one, who are you picking? Number two, uh, I'll give you kind of a different question here. Do you think that the Bills defense is going to hold up against that high-powered Kansas City offense? Yeah, so that was actually what I was going to get into regarding the pick. So the Bills' defensive line has been really good recently. I mean, you know, led by Ed Oliver. I think he's been big. Jerry Hughes as well off the outside. Um, but I think the problem is is that the Chiefs off – so, I, you know, when, when we talk about it on our pod, we always talk about lines of scrimmage. That is where the games are won. You know, we can talk about all the receivers, quarterbacks, you know, corners or whatever, but it's won in the trenches, both sides of the ball, offensive line and defensive line. 
You can look at any big game. It's always the team that wins on both sides that usually pulls it out. And the Chiefs have just been winning on both sides of the line of scrimmage for the last, what, eight, nine weeks. And the only one they didn't is the loss to the Cincinnati. So um, I, I love their core right now. Orlando Brown, Joe Tooney, Creed Humphrey. I mean, the list goes on and on with the offensive linemen that they have. They have a lot of depth there as well. Um, so I think the Chiefs are just going to win the line of scrimmage on that. And also, it's really hard to beat a good team twice. Uh, and that's what the Bills, you know, did earlier in the season. Their defense was just phenomenal. I think they gave looks that Mahomes just wasn't simply ready for. Um, and I, I just think Chiefs, the Chiefs have, you know, they have a little bit more film on that now. And it's hard to be unpredictable with Kansas City on defense. Uh, and I think Mahomes has found his groove again. So that's why I think the Bills' defense will struggle a little bit. And, I again, it's hard to beat Mahomes twice. So I'm going to go with the Chiefs here. Yeah, I, I think that, again, you can go either way in any of these playoff games, really. I'm going to take the Bills. Uh, last week I took the Pats, and obviously I feel horrible about that. Um, so I am going to rock the Bills through today. I'm going to take the Bills for that sake. And I think that, honestly, they're able to take them down. If they can perform like they did last week, I think the Bills are virtually unstoppable. Um, now we'll transition over into the NFC. Our first game will go to Packers versus Niners. Uh, the Niners pulling off that crazy W, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode against the Cowboys. You know, a bunch of thoughts on that. Dylan, you can give your quick thoughts just on that game quickly. And, you know, if Dallas actually got kind of tricked out of that win with the refs, or was it really just Dallas and their penalties and that just accumulated with a loss? You know, I definitely think, uh, you know, they kind of got screwed over on that last play. Um, but, you know, they really screwed themselves over the entire game, uh, you know, with, with the 14 penalties, uh, you know, and Connor Williams, it, he kills me every time we watch the Cowboys. It's like he gets like three or four penalties every week and they bench him one week and then he just is a starter the rest of the year. And it doesn't make any sense to me, um, you know, because I feel like that O-line is so good um, that, you know, you can't have guys, you know, committing crucial penalties like that. Um, and, you know, Z couldn't get going. So, you know, that's kind of been the story of the Cowboys offense, I think, is, you know, that if that run game's not there, they're not going to be the, you know, best offense that, you know, the stats say they are. So I think, the, you know, that ref might have screwed them over, uh, you know, by running into Dak. I mean, I don't know what he was doing, like running up the middle. Uh, you know, maybe he thought he had more time. I don't really know. But I think the Cowboys did it to themselves. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I agree. I like, you can blame the refs all you want, but like the Cowboys way too many penalties that game. They didn't perform until like eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give credit to the Niners, a great game kind of overall by Jimmy B. I like the way he's come back, won them that first playoff game. Now talking about the Niners versus Packers, Dylan, who do you like in this game? You think that the Niners could upset the first seed Green Bay? You know, I over the past couple of weeks, I've been the biggest advocate for the 49ers. I think they're the most underrated team, uh, you know, in these playoffs, even though, you know, they do have a 9-7 and seven record. Um, but, you know, Nick Bosa's injury last week uh, against the Cowboys and, you know, not knowing if he's going to come back. Uh, and, you know, Fred Warner having to play hurt, uh, you know, it's going to be tough for them. I mean, I love Debo Samuel. Uh, you know, and I think George Kittle may have a big game as, you know, historically he's pretty good against the Packers. Um, but, you know, with those defensive injuries, I just don't think the 49ers are going to have enough defensive firepower to be able to even contain Aaron Rodgers, you know, because there's no stopping him. Um, so, yeah, I think the Pack – and, you know, and it's in Lambeau. So it's always tough, you know, to beat the Packers there. So I'm taking the Packers this week. Yeah, completely agree with you. Adams and Rodgers, like – that duo in itself is scary as hell. Like I, I love the 49ers, but I think that the Packers, like I'm not going to bet against Rogers. Just like, I don't think I'm going to get a bet against uh, Brady Gall, I'll let you jump in here. What are your thoughts on the Niners Packers game? Who do you have winning it? Sure. First, I just want to say, it seems that Dylan is a ref sympathist. <laughs> look, look at that shirt he's wearing. Yeah, man. <laughs> He likes him. So he's a he's a Cowboys fan. Just he's take what he says with a grain of salt. If you're listening to him, just just make sure you know the guy. He's 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 in a generation. His father was a ref. His father's father was a ref. Mm -hmm. um, but, Gotta uh, keep it in the bloodline. <laughs> for the game, 
Um, I think there's obviously no betting against Aaron Rodgers, especially this this season. I mean, he's just entered a whole new gear. It seems like he's focused on one thing and one thing only right now, and that's and that's winning. Um, it's it's crazy because usually you see these guys who are about to potentially leave a team and, and they don't play their best. Example, Russell Wilson, uh, because they've got other things on their mind. But no, like he's he's locked in. And I do think that the uh, that the Niners have a good shot of putting up some some decent points. I mean, they've got weapons on their team. I could see it being like 17, 17 or something close to it at the half. But that's when Green Bay just pulls away and and, you know, shows that they've just got much more experience and obviously they're at home and it's gonna be a difficult game what's the do we know what the weather's like Ooh, i don't know I believe it's under 20 right yeah. now um, yeah i know it's under 20 for sure i don't know if it's snowing but yeah that's gonna be a, also a big thing to think about just mm-hmm. i mean california teams don't get to play in the cold that often so yep. you gotta you gotta remember that um but yeah obviously i'm gonna i'm gonna give it to the the packers yeah uh, as I mentioned, I'm taking the Packers. Like Rogers, odd, very odd off season, very odd season. There's been some like really weird things that happen, like with the COVID nineteen scandal, and then like his feet up on the desk. Like there's just been some like weird, weird things happening. But he somehow pulled it together, like he usually does. And they're make they're gonna make a playoff run here. I think they're gonna make close to a Super Bowl run, if not a Super Bowl run. Uh, Anish, who do you have in this game? Packers versus Niners. Yeah, so it's kind of weird. I have a lot of kind of 49er ties. I'm from the Bay. Uh, I actually know Debo Samuel. I've been his biggest fan since college. Uh, we went live really? a couple times on Instagram. Yeah, so uh, that is my guy. But um, here's here's what I will say. I, I mean, you know, I, I'm not a Niners fan, actually. I'm a Browns fan, but um, from the Bay. But, you know, Debo's my guy. He always will be. Um, I know, I know. I see him laughing he's, in the back. He's laughing because he's just oh. fan. But, yeah, at least we beat y'all last year in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Baker. I have no idea what oh, Brown fans are thinking. I could go, I, I could go off, on end with him. Dude, I could go. I, I bet hours. But um, hey, OB, honestly, OBJ, it's, it's OBJ just game. came out and threw much better than Baker did all season. That's all. I know I'm they should have put him at quarterback. That would have solved all the issues. He's had the highest winning percentage of any QB this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying he went two and zero. Oh. Uh, yeah. But in regards to the to the Niners Packers game, I think. I mean, you know, one reason why I picked them to beat the Cowboys last week is just because the, their run game and their defense, they play they play a game that is catered towards the playoffs, right? You run it, and the best, the best thing, you know, to hurt a great quarterback is a run game because you keep them off the field, right? So Niners milked off clock. They won time of possession. That's what they tend to do. Uh, and, you know, Kyle Shanahan is just an offensive guru. He's a mastermind. Uh, But I think in regards to this game, I think this is Aaron Rodgers' best team he's honestly ever had. Um, I think when you look at it top to bottom, player for player, I think this is his best roster. And as you guys were talking about, uh, you know, you were talking about how throughout the year he's had these weird stories. I think he's refound his motivation throughout the year. He's even said it on the Pat McAfee show. So I think, you know, coming into the playoffs, he kind of knows it too. He listens to all the things the media says. He agrees. Like, this is his best chance to win one. And, you know, I know the Niners, as, uh, you know, Gall mentioned, they are not a cold weather team. None of these players have played in that type of weather, you know, late in January yet. They are all, this Niners team is still pretty young to the core. Uh, And as much as I like the run game and as much as I like their defense, we have to see it develop, you know, in that type of icy weather, which the Packers are used to playing. Uh, And I just checked the forecast. It is 50% snow. So, you know, we'll we'll see on that. And it is going to be under 20 degrees. So, and the Packers have played like, 50 games in under 20 degrees and a lot of their players are veterans so i'm gonna take the packers on that um i just hope you know debo still has a good game (laughs) you know out of spite for him but uh you know i think yeah i think the packers just overall have a little bit more you know to play for also i think the niners at three and five no one expected them to get here this was kind of a good win uh but yeah i I like matt lafleur and i like what the packers have going yeah I agree. Uh, and again, that Packers defense this year has been pretty solid. 13th out of 32 in points again. So pretty decent for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's going to run the offense like nobody else. So that's really all you can ask for if you're Aaron Rodgers. I th- I see success uh, in their future. Uh, moving towards our last game here now is going to be Bucks rams uh, I'm really excited to see what this game has in store for us. I think that after seeing what the Rams did, they're probably favorited, but I'm never counting out Tom uh, Gall. I'll go to you first here. 
are you going to take the Rams here or the Bucks? Like, so in my opinion, this is the game of the weekend. I think a lot of people are looking to Bills Chiefs to be the game of the weekend, uh, but I think it's going to. I think this is going to be quite the shootout. Um, I'm actually living in LA right now. I'm not an LA fan, but I happen to be here right now, so I've been hearing about it all week. It's probably the game I've talked about the most. Um, I do think that Tom ha- and and the Bucks have kind of shown a little bit of vulnerability in these last few weeks, and um, you know it's it's got people on edge a little bit. Um, meanwhile, the Rams look like they've got it all figured out. It looks like they've they've added all the pieces up that they need. You know, they figured out the Von Miller thing, they figured out the OBJ thing. It's all starting to mesh right now, right when it needs to. So I think it's going to be. That's why I think it's going to be a bit of a shootout um, as well. You've got the defense in in LA that's just. You know, Aaron Donald is a uh, is a bit of a monster. Um, so this is a real tough one for me because betting against Tom Brady has just never ever proven to be that successful. Yeah. Um, so this is the first time I've really thought about it, which is why I don't have this ready to go for you. But um, I think I'm going to be rocking with the Rams. I do. I think that I don't know. It's kind of more of a gut instinct than than yeah. a real reason for you, but but that's what I got. Yeah, no, I think like for me, my gut is Rams, but like my my brain is telling me like you can't you can't put a post out going against Tom Brady until the guy yeah. loses because then then you're just gonna look like a fool. And like if you're picking the Rams, you're not really looking like a fool, yeah, because they <laughs> they've just been playing so good. But I I, I can't bet against Tom and. And the Rams, again, they've been inconsistent at times this this year. And so have the Bucs. But the Rams are also playing in Tampa, which I think could sway towards Tampa slightly. Uh, Anish, who do you have in this game? Now, first off, this is going to sound really crazy. But I've also been, just like Devo, the biggest Cooper Cup fan since Eastern Washington. I've defended this guy day in and day out. And to see him go crazy this year has just been amazing. Uh, so I think, and actually his best game last year, was against the Bucks. He had uh, on Monday Night Football. He had 11 catches for 145. Uh, Robert Woods also had a career game against them, uh, but he's not here for this matchup. Uh, and I think one thing to note for the Bucks Rams is that I think schematically, again, lines of scrimmage. I look for that. The Bucks match up really well. Like uh, for the Rams, they want to establish the run right, and then Matt, get Matthew Stafford off play action to throw the ball down the field. The Bucks' run defense, despite all the injuries in the back end, has kept the back end pretty good because of how stout they've been playing. Shaq Baird, Vita Vey is back, right? Uh, JPP, they just have guys that, you know, know, know where to plug, uh, you know, the A and B gaps. They're really good against the run. I just, I just don't think the Rams will be able to have their way the way they had it with the Cardinals. And even you saw it in the second half against the 49ers when they really buckled down. Uh, in that second half and really focused on the run. You saw Stafford struggle a little bit on throws that were just down the field again, you know, more than 10 yards. So it's hard, you know, I've, I'm, I, I've loved the Rams all year. They were actually my preseason Super Bowl pick, but, you know, when push comes to shove, I just cannot bet against Tom Brady. I have, we've been, I've been picking games for the last five years. I have not picked against Brady once, and I've only been wrong twice. So the Titans game and the Eagles game. So I, I just – it's so hard to bet against this guy. And I think, you know, he's going to show up. Uh, Evans is going to show up. Gronk is going to show up. And I just think, you know, this being at Tampa as well, I think the Bucks are going to take this matchup, especially because the Rams won it in the regular season. And as I said earlier, it's hard to beat a team twice. Good team twice. Yeah, yeah no, for sure. And, like, for me, I, I want Tom to win because, like, I want I want to see Tom win as many Super Bowls. Because, like, he's already picked people off enough. Like, I just want to see the greatness continue. <laughs> but also, those Instagram posts after the wins, those are unbeatable, man. Like, <laughs> I see them. And, like, it's, like, these crazy collage videos. I'm like, dude, like, how is he? Like, who does he have working for him? It's wild. But, yeah, uh, Dylan, I'll go to you last here. Bucks versus Rams. Who do you have taking out a W? Man, I, you know, this is by far, I think, for me, the toughest game to pick, you know, because when you think about it, Bucks have been dealing, you know, with a lot of offensive injuries. And, you know, even if Leonard Fournette can play, I think they're really going to struggle on the run game, even though the Bucks have, you know, that good offensive line. Uh, Tristan Wirfs, you know, was seen in a walking boot. So somehow he's only questionable for this game. Uh, but, you know, even, you know, with him playing injured, uh, I think, you know, he might struggle if he does play. So the Bucks all O line's gonna be banged up a little bit. Um but you know, like my thing is 
they the the Bucks have Jalen Rams or the <laughs> Bucks have Mike Evans and you know Gronk and you know Jalen Ramsey is probably going to be shadowing Mike Evans you know at least on his side of the field um, but you know the Rams for me don't have good pass coverage linebackers and I think you know that's going to be huge uh, for Gronk. Uh, you know, and Tom Brady and, you know, like everyone's been saying, it's Tom Brady. I mean, it's hard to bet against him. And Matthew Stafford doesn't have as much playoff experience, uh, you know, obviously. Uh, so, you know, for me, it's it's experience. And it's like Anish said, it's the, you know, Bucks run defense, um, you know, and I think they're going to be able to get to Stafford and, uh, you know, it's really going to bring them a lot of pressure. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to take the Bucks in this one. Yeah, for sure. And I think, first off, credit to Cam Akers for having the game that he did uh, against the Cardinals a few days ago. Coming off that injury, nobody expected him back, and he came out, and I think he had nearly 100 yards, somewhere around there, 95 mm -hmm. yards. Um, so that that's just crazy to see him succeed to that level uh, coming right off an injury. And Dylan, to answer your question, why Tristan Wirfs is questionable, it's because he saw what happened with A.B., and he doesn't want anything to happen after that with Bruce Arians coming out to cut him. So he's going to be, uh, he's ready to go. He's going to be, he's going to be ready to go. Let's hope. Uh, and just to close out the episode, guys, let's just shoot out, shoot out some Super Bowl picks. Uh, Gall, I'll let you go first here. Who is your Super Bowl matchup and who do you got winning? The matchup for me is Green Bay Bills. Mm. And I think that Green Bay takes it. Yeah. I need yeah. who do you got? Oh man, it tough to say. I'm, you know, I'm gonna Browns. I really <laughs> not the Browns, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna go. You know, guts telling me Packers Chiefs right now, and I know that seems, you know, picking the favorites, but I just, I just don't think, you know, it's gonna be really hard to beat these two teams. And if they were to match up, I just think Aaron Rodgers would beat Patrick Mahomes. Right. Yeah. And Dylan, uh, who do you got matching up, and who do you got taking it all home? Uh, you know, I, I like the Titans, honestly. And, you know, they were my preseason pick, uh, to take it all the way. Um, you know, that that's definitely, uh, you know, debatable, but I think that home field advantage is going to, you know, definitely play in. And I, I, I don't know what it is with Aaron Rodgers in the NFC championship, but I think this is the year he finally, you know, conquers that. So I'm going to say Packers Titans, and then I think the Packers are going to win it all. Awesome. And my Super Bowl pick, just for the record, I'm going to keep it with Brady. I'm taking the Bucks versus the Bills, and I like the Bucks for the Super Bowl. I, I, just, I want to see Brady win another one. I'm not a Brady, I'm not a Brady lover or anything. I just want to see the greatness continue. So that's going to wrap up tonight's episode, guys. Thank you very, very much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. And for everybody watching, guys, thank you very, very much for sticking with us through the end. We'll have a few more episodes rolling in to cover the conference championship games. And then finally, that big game, the Super Bowl. And then through the offseason, of course, you guys know we got you covered. Again, big thanks to everybody who came on to watch. And we will catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out, guys.